Hello, everyone. We are back again. I'm Nico Luro, and I'm here once again with Lauren, and we're here to review House of the Dragon Season 2, Episode 7. Stay tuned until the end, because we're going to be giving our rundown, a preview of the final episode, Episode 8, at the end of the show. So do stay tuned until the end to watch that and watch uh, what our initial feedback is. Before we continue, I still noticed that like 95% of you are watching and not subscribed. So please get subscribing, guys. I appreciate the community. Help it grow. We need you here. All shilling done. Damn, this is a good episode, right, Lauren? Oh, it was, I, it's not what I expected because the usual Game of Thrones pattern oh. is I was fully expecting like full on battle. So they've really changed yeah. it up here, which really indicates they're going to leave it on some sort of hang uh, hangover, uh, cliffhanger that is going to completely floor us. That's what I'm now expecting. Um, but, you know, dragons. Just dragons. Dragons. It, it was, oh. I do have a feeling I know what the cliffhanger is. Um, and it's not what I previously guessed, which is Damon's death. Oh. I reckon they're holding off on that for a bit more. I think so. Um, yeah. Because because the battle didn't happen this episode, so do you remember Rhaenyra sent her her two sons away, Aegon and Viserys? Mm -hmm. I reckon the, the the cliffhanger ends with them getting captured, and I reckon Otto Hightower captures them. I reckon that's Ooh. I reckon that's that's the big cliffhanger. Like Otto's back, which means Aemon has got his hand, and the princes are now in the hands of the enemy, which means those. Dragons aren't worth a lick of paint. Mm. Interesting. That's left field. That's not something I've contemplated yet. Although I did wonder why they were ex seemingly expelled from the Vale. Or the, was yeah. it the Eyrie? Was it the Vale or the Eyrie where they were? No, it's Dragonstone. Where? What the the what, princes? Where is? Yeah, no, the, 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 princes the little princes. Oh no, they went to the no, they, they went to the well the Vale the area. Yeah, the you're quite right. They did go to the Yeah, 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 yeah. What's the Vale? You're quite <laughs> right. <sorry>. Um, <laughs> I got something yeah, they're right. Gonna get, they're gonna get captured. That's that's my that's guess. That's interesting. That is interesting. That's my guess. Something bad has to happen to the Targaryens at the end of each at the end of each season and until we get to the end. That's kind of my two cents yeah. how they've done this. It's like building a wrestling match. It's literally that. Mm. It's literally that. Uh, well, the opening, since you want to talk about dragons. I mean, they didn't oh, waste time, did they? Opening shot. Yeah. That <laughs> is my first note Rhaenyra from and Adam. Stunning. Like, obviously, we saw yeah. that shot in the, um, in the preview as well. So it wasn't yeah. a surprise shot. But the fact that they just went boom on the screen was nice. I mean, there was a noticeable... Slight decline in CGI with the dragons from Game of Thrones, I thought, but they didn't miss the detail because something that we both we both noticed when we were watching it was like the knuckle dragging, for want of a, a better phrase, through the sand. Mm. So yeah, like they yeah, really yeah, yeah, yeah. put the effort in to to make it work, um, and it really was a stunning visual, absolutely stunning. The physics engine was on full display here. Do you think Adam joined her a little bit too easily? Here's, here's the reason I ask that, because up until now, him, Adam and Alan have been kind of bickering and Adam's been of the stance of, well, we should get more for what, you know, we should get more recognition. And Alan's mm -hmm. been telling him, bro, let it go. We're bastards. Just let it be. We're, we're, mm -hmm. let's, let's get through life without making waves type thing. Now he's got a dragon. He has power, and he's instantly like, "I am here to serve you." It's like, but hasn't your whole shtick until now kind of been like, "I'm bored of serving"? Um, oh, I suppose it could go either way. I didn't get that initially. I, I mean, if it was me and a dragon came and found me, and I was all of a sudden a dragon rider, it'd be like, "Yeah, I'll serve you." I am cool. buying to no one. And then <laughs> <laughs> I, d I don't know I think I think there's more of a focus on him finding his purpose and mm. if it's one of her dragons that came and found him something could have clicked very much clicked in his head to say actually this is what I'm supposed to do I yep. didn't I, I didn't get anything else from it because he hasn't got anything else to achieve really like if he starts trying to go for a claim on the throne or whatever he's not going to get very far 
Mm. Um, but yeah, they, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see how it um, how it unfolds with him. But I didn't get anything aside from his. He found his calling. Like his calling has come to find him, sort of thing. Yeah. That doesn't mean it won't so, go anywhere else. So they both kind of came to an arrangement and understanding. He's like, "I'm here to serve you, my queen." And they fly back to Dragonstone, and we got to that uh, that scene which I which we called both of us predicted in the in the preview for this episode last week when we said those two dragons that's uh that sea storm and and uh Rhaenyra coming back and jace continues to look angry so angry well that unfolds a little bit more throughout the episode doesn't it which i, I actually that. when he was describing it to him or to her sorry and how he was feeling about it I was like, okay, mate, I understand where you're coming from now because he knows he's not a Targaryen. Well, he is a Targaryen. He knows he's not full blood, shall we say. He's ha clearly had his suspicions and he clearly knows it. So he thinks mm. that it's only the dragon that's going to keep him powerful and for people to bend the knee to him when he succeeds her. So he's mm. basically begging her not to allow these people in to ride these dragons because it's not going to help him in any way. And I kind of get it. Uh, but at the oh, same time listen, I get where he's coming from I completely get where he's coming from And you've mm -hmm. also got to play this a role deeper right? Because if you know, let, Let's play the theory here Rhaenyra comes to power, she lives a full life as queen When she passes away and Jace comes to power He's of the same age gap As Aegon and Aemond And they've yeah. got much more of a claim to the throne than he does This is all just going to start again and I think mm. he was kind of almost imploring her to be like, can you please like see the forest for the trees here? Yeah. Like I for the first time I kind of saw where he was coming from, the way he said it. It was like, look, where the dragon riders, but amongst us, the, there are there are levels to this. And I am unfortunately not at the high level. So when you're gone, I mean I'm not at as high a level as Aemon yeah. and Aegon. Like, when you're yeah. gone. Yeah, when you're gone, this all starts again. I'm in a world of trouble here. And it's mm. not going to be helped if you bring in an army of bastards. Um, but I, I do have to say, I thought, again, we called that too, that top-down shot of Dragonstone. It was like, I said, those yeah. are the bastards coming. You called it, to be fair. I do like, what, what, what's what's Veneera's, uh lady pal called? Uh, is it Masara or something like that? Um, something Masaria, along those lines. that's it. That's it. Sorry. I, I I thought her little exchange with Renera was fantastic. The way she said, uh, Renera was like, yeah, but what about my brothers? And she's like, well, you got a shipwright here who's literally throwing himself on the line for you with absolutely yep. no need to do so. And your so-called brothers who swear fealty. Yeah, they're already on the other side. So what was it she said? I made a note of it. It was brilliant. Uh, da, 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 da. What, the, the order Masara of things said? is... Yeah, yeah, the order of things has changed. And now I was like, oh, yeah. yes. Very And then good. the following very, line very as good. well. I noted this as well. So, like, we both clicked onto this. I thought it was very, very well done. Her her feedback to Renera there was perfect. And she had such a good mm. point. And then Renera yeah. obviously responded with, let us raise an army of uh, an army of bastards. So that, yeah. to me, nodded to so good. Battle of the Bastards and... You know, it's it's all oh, the little Easter eggs and stuff. It was really brilliantly delivered that, and it rolls back into what we were saying in the last episode of of the of the political episodes, like the way that they build these stories and the thinking that gets them to the decision making that they get to is just it's fascinating the way it's put together, and really really well it's done. So damn good! It is so damn good. Um, then it cut to aim. Uh, sorry, not Aemon. It cut to Damon. Aemon had a very small part in this episode, actually, unfortunately, mm. my favorite character. But yeah, <laughs> da da we cut to Damon, and his whole exchange with Oscar Tully was freaking oh. fantastic. Oscar Dude. Tully stole the show in this episode. Didn't he what just, a little like, actor. My, he was brilliant. My, Anya didn't like him. She was like, this actor annoys me. I'm like, no, 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 oh, no, really? no, no. And I think it, he's supposed to a bit, though. Switched. Yeah. It was before he switched. I'm like, give it a moment. Something bad's going to happen here. And surely enough, don't mess with a young Westerosi boy. Um, shout out to Jace. Uh, but yeah, the that that line Eamon said, which is, I don't need their love. I need their swords. And he sort of instantly follows up. With, yeah, you've made a bit of a mess of things, haven't you? And the way he showed Damon up publicly. Careful, he was, he was really asserting himself like, 
you wouldn't have right. expected that from such a young um lord i suppose like someone who's just mm. inherited his child like yeah. an entire you know valley of people and and you know being in charge of such you're know, having such responsibility and he clearly knows his game because he was asserting himself straight away by making Damon kill is it the uh, the um I always get them mixed Blackwood. up was it the Blackwood guy yeah, yeah. um also yeah, yeah. why have they made him look like He-Man so that, that that's a, a, a side <laughs> thing. um I love that denounce your crimes and expend justice and it was mm. literally like it, that was a brilliant bit of you know Game of Thronesing because this yeah. young kid is telling the the, the king consort or Damon would like to be called king. He's telling him, mm. no, no, you behead him. This is yeah. your mess. You fix this, and he bloody does it. I was like, whoo! See, we were what watching, it and, and Danny was like, "Is this a dream? Is this one of his weird little dreams?" And I was like, "No, oh. I don't think it is." Like, I think they're trying no. to like that last shot of his face. I think they were trying to make you think. Is this real? But it was quite. Mm. It was quite clear that it was. But yeah, that was game changing. Like he was really impressive. Like he really impressed me. He's gonna have a really cool yeah. death. Damon might even kill him. Oh, that's a good shout, Damon killing Oscar Tali. Yeah, I could see that. I could They're building absolutely it. see that. They're teasing it, but that doesn't mean it's gonna happen. That you no. know, this is Westeros. Remember, it's whenever you start to feel comfortable that that's when you know. <laughs> Stuff you should I, I, I don't think I've felt comfortable watching Game of Thrones or House of the Dragon since like season two. Since since Sean Bean died, it, that was it. I don't think I've ever felt comfortable watching it. Like nothing is ever off no. the table. You, you second guess everything that happens. But it's so brilliant. Do you know what? Enough. I'm one I'm one of the, the poor saps who got fooled by the Red Wedding. I didn't clock really? on to the Yeah, it was only on second time I was like, Oh, they changed the music, they're playing the reigns of Castam if <laughs> They're all See, I didn't have that experience because we didn't start watching until season six. Was it season six where Jon Snow comes back to life at the beginning? And six we knew that was no seven. Yeah. And it was so somewhere around there. So when we knew it was yeah. coming, we started watching it. So we got to watch like the first five or however many seasons just all together. But I'd heard already heard about the red wedding. I'd already heard about the purple wedding. So every time they were coming, I was just watching Danny. And just like seeing seeing how he was reacting and when the red wedding was coming up and he, i just saw his face start going yeah and i was just like i was kind of glad that i knew because i don't think my little heart could have taken it it was oh god oh, dude it's so bad not as bad as the viper in the mountain but bad mm. oh god there's the viper so much in the, so the viper in the mountain is one of the most disturbing things i've ever seen that was too mm. much there's like no 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 you've taken it too far that's that's my threshold that you've now crossed i know we're sidebarring a little bit but i have to give a shout out to my favorite scene of game of thrones completely is elena tyrell when jamie gives her the poison and she tells him that she killed joffrey it was like stand up round of applause and i got to yeah and i got to tell mark my life Got to tell Mark Mylod yeah. about that. And it's like, I am so, yeah. like, you've literally created my favourite scene in TV, probably ever, or one of, 100%. So good. Um, oh, so, she's brilliant. So, she so was fantastic. Um, anyway, we digress. Uh, yeah, so, so <laughs> Tony Clayman, denounce your crimes and expend justice. So then we cut back to the scene which we were alluding to before. The... the, the what I thought was the best scene, despite dragons... The politics of it is what fascinates me. The best scene yeah. with Joceris or Jason and uh, Renera mm -hmm. when he says, "Stop!" What 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 was the line? These people are mongrels. The moment he said that, and then the moment which led into her trying to comfort him, and then her saying, "Like I have to go down this path," and the look he gives her, I was like. Bruv, you are so betraying her. <laughs> like, yeah. Since I said that to you last week, every time I see him now, I'm like looking for the for the You're waiting for trail. The, I'm like, for the trigger. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh. You know what? It wouldn't be surprising if he's the one who tells Otto Hightower where the princes are. Ooh, ooh, I'd yeah. like to think he wouldn't go, go that far. But oh, like, yeah, but I remember he's he's saying. worried, he's worried about his lineage now. So let's get rid of everyone, mm -hmm. right? 
let yeah. them all kill each other. Oh, dude. Yeah. Where is that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, I mean, again, but yeah, for people who haven't read the books here. Yeah, and I, I, I find it more fun this way because I think if, I mean, obviously, there's nothing against... I don't know what's coming. I mean, no, no offense, obviously, to anybody who's read the books. I mean, fair play. You know, my ADHD brain can't concentrate for that long anyway. But I think being able to watch something this big and cinematic for the first time without having any idea, apart from yep. the clues and the stories that we've heard in Game of Thrones from what we remember of it. Um, mm -hmm. it, it like you said before, it's like literally nothing's off the table. It could go in any direction. They don't have to follow the book stringently. They might use them as a guideline. They might do something entirely different. Uh, but yeah, this was this was a really, a really exciting episode. Like it was goosebumps in multiple multiple places. What um what did you make of the whole Alison in the forest bathing stuff? Do you reckon that was a moment of reflection where she's sort of like, well, this is all basically my fault. Uh, let me go purify myself, type thing. What how, what did you make of it? I stick to what I said last week. I think since she had that moment of clarity with Renera when she realized she got it wrong, she also realized mm. it was too late because mm. th that, she, that she had no power to stop it, really. Even if she told them that was the truth, they probably wouldn't have believed it. And since then, you've seen her spiraling and it almost get her going into a depression. And then they're, they're showing yeah. you her going through that journey like when she was talking to her brother about her other son and how he's doing really well but she's had no real involvement with him for however many years but the son she has had an involvement with have gone and done the things that they're doing and I, I think she's spiraling and I think personally I think it's building up to her I think I said this last week but having some sort of epic sacrificial death like the hound of the mountain like she's going to take somebody down and sacrifice herself at the same time something along Amen. those lines potentially she, potentially I, I would love that i would love that and especially how they're building that interaction between mother and son that whole scene that, that you were talking about last week where she touches his face and says have the injustices of your childhood not been um what was it not, um satisfying not, not been sufficed or satisfied that's, that's it something like that yeah um i just feel so like there's good. there's more to this i feel like she's going to come full circle because she's not going to care about her own life anymore she, she's going to want to rectify what she's done. This is, this is how I feel at the moment. And I think that, like you say, kind of purification thing, I think it's more I think it's more getting away from the noise of everything and the silence mm. and the um, the stillness of where she, wa where she was at the time. Um, I don't necessarily think it's a purifying thing. I think that might be part of the symbolism in the cinematography, but from a, a storyline, from her story arc perspective, I feel it's more showing us this mental process she's going through of realization and maybe even thinking about what she can do to make it better and you know she may she may even when i say sacrifice she may even try to kill Eamon but not be successful and then she has that epic death when he gets the better of her or something like that um but either way i think she's going through a serious serious mental uh journey with this yeah i think that's what they're going to show so then all the bastards start to arrive and we get to what I believe a lot of people are going to say is the best scene. I don't agree, but it's an awesome scene. Bastards arrive. Valerians decide, well, you're treating the dragons like playthings. They all leave. So now the mm. dragons have the dragon genus. Now, do you remember we talked about this last week, that shot of Rhaenyra standing and freaking Vermigal's yes. head coming behind her? And I was like, I bet you anything, she's just going to be like, who wants this? Yeah. That's exactly what it was. And, and then she like, just walked off. And it's like, <laughs> where are you going? Like, you've just controlled the dragon. There's no one else here that can control the dragon. Come back. What are you doing? But I, 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 just I, had, like, I really. Uh, the little girl from Resident Evil coming in my head going, you're all going to die down here. <laughs> I really enjoyed her reaction when she managed to get Vermithor to settle for her. And the relief mm. when she closed her eyes, but then the smirk on her face that was like, I'm I'm badass. Like because yeah, yeah, yeah. like, I've just put myself in her position because you know, I know they're not real, but oh my god, dragons, and I want one. Like it would I can't imagine the feeling of power. Oh like the, the sheer power there. But yeah. it, I I did enjoy the way that unfolded, apart from obviously loads of people dying unnecessarily, the way they unfolded the thing, two. Yeah. Yeah, that, that little thing. Um, the, the two bastards they've been building up. Because obviously you could see where that was going a mile off. 
but the way that they did it and the way that I've forgotten his name, but the, the drunk guy went and found Silver Wing. Oh, and the way oh, that's it. Um, and the way that she just almost flirted with him when she saw him, I just thought it was yeah, lovely. Yeah. It was such a contrast. And such a compliment to both of their story arcs and the type of men that they are or want to be. I just thought it was that was my favorite bit. I wouldn't necessarily say it was my favorite scene. That was my favorite part of the story unfolding because we knew we knew it was coming, but I think they just gave them both their individual little stories there. And I just thought it was really nice the way, the way it was done. And I thought the cinematography of it was stunning as well. It's interesting you mentioned Silver Wing was flirting with the Ulf. That's exactly how I interpret it as well. <laughs> like he falls over and she basically goes up to him and smells his crotch. I was just like, you could so put an narration in going, you smell good, boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it did look like, and I couldn't work out, did he stand in poo or did he stand in a nest? Because no, it looked like egg, an egg. egg. It was an egg. egg, right. Okay, so we, yeah. we couldn't quite tell because we could see because it was quite dark. I mean, the cinematography was stunning, yeah, but yeah. it was dark in, in moments. Um, but yeah, we weren't quite sure because like that could have gone really wrong. Like even if he was mm -hmm. a potential rider, you go near her eggs. But she was quite happy for him to be there, and and a, such a strong connection straight away. Vermithor took a, took yeah. a little bit of warming, for want of a better phrase. Um, but mm. it, it was those <laughs> personality matches. No yeah. <laughs> they, 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 they were perfect matches, weren't they? Really, because you've got Hugh, who's the big guy who's, who wasn't afraid of him and screamed in his face. And it was almost like you could see Vermithor like, "I like you, let's be friends." Mm. Um, and then you've got again Silver the narration thing. Mm. I was like, I, I almost thought Verma thought of being a Russian dragon. It's like, okay, you all are going to die now. You <laughs> all suck. I am going to burn you. And then he comes up to, to, to Hugh, and it's like, okay, you're not pussy. You can stay. You can stay. Now all Please, I'm gonna hear is back. that voice. <sighs> yes, yes, come on back, ride me hard like a dragon. <laughs> Do you know who Silverwing reminds me of? Now it's literally just come into my head. The dragon from Shrek. Yeah. The flirt, the flunky. It's literally Flag. that oh. relationship. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's Love the that. dragon from the highest tower. <laughs> <laughs> Loved I love the design on Silverwing, I have to say. Until this point, Caraxes was my favorite dragon, but I do think that Silverwing is beautiful. Mm. What a cool design! Mm. What a cool design! Mm, um, so yeah, Vega we have our, we have our... <laughs> Vega, do you know what? Vega just looks like a freaking Drake, he doesn't even look like a dragon. He's like, he looks like one of those Nazgul Drakes from Lord of it's the Rings. It's a she, you know? it's a she. she sorry, refers... she. Looks... No, I was gonna say, she I would have thought like he Nazgul as well, Drake. the stereotypical yeah. he, but Renera referred to Vega as a she, so I was like, mm. oh. Okay, that's interesting because Don't mess I feel with like, big mama. yeah, exactly. But then you've got Vermithor, who's the massive big popper. But I know that they're a couple, so to speak, Silverwing and, and Vermithor. So oh, it could go in so many wonderful entanglements. But I feel like it's like watching the direwolves when they pick them off one by one. It's worse watching yeah, them get yeah. the animals than it is getting the humans, and they're not even real creatures. <laughs> and it's right. worse. It's like, Don't kill the dragon. Don't kill the dragons. Take the people. So before we get into the preview for the final seat for the final episode, just a little pop quiz to, to highlight how one sided this battle has just become. Question oh. for you How many dragons does Renera currently have? Oh, um, hang on. And I'm not even sure I'm right about this, but I've counted them, Ooh. the ones that I can think of, and it's a big number. I'm like, oh, this has just become one sided. Okay, so you've got Syriax, you've got Sea Smoke, you've got Vermithor, Silverwing, um, Jace's Dragon. Um, they've got the Baby Dragon, but obviously they're not going to do anything with that. Uh, we don't count them. No, so that's five I've got so far. Who am I missing? Oh, there's um, the Sheep Stealer as well, which I think is it. I Lenora? haven't even counted that one yet. I you haven't even counted that one yet. Who am I missing then? Oh, Damon's Dragon. So. Well, exactly. So you've got Rhaenyra's dragon. Yeah. Because she's got her own dragon. you got yeah, sorry. Jace's dragon. Yeah. You've got the other black girl's dragon. Forgive yeah. me if I oh, can't remember yeah. her name. Yeah. Baylor. Baylor. 
Baylor, thank you. You've got mm. Damon's dragon. Yeah. You've got Ulf, Adam, yeah. Silver and Hugh. Sea smoke. Seven. Yeah. She's That's got seven dragons. At, yeah. She has seven dragons at her disposal. And the other side have one. Technically more. Helena has a dragon but refuses to fly him. And this young mm -hmm. brother that they keep teasing repeatedly has a dragon. But as they said in this episode, the dragon has literally only just taken to the sky. Which yeah. tells me one of a few things. These dragons are about to meet a very quick and untimely end at Vagar's hands, just to reinforce how powerful Vagar is. Because yeah. seven on one, I'm... Or even seven on two. This doesn't make sense anymore. Like, as far mm -hmm. as I'm concerned, this battle is over. Like, there's no fight. She had seven dragons. There mm -hmm. is no fight here. And that's not even counting the sheep stealer they're about to get. Yeah. Right? Like, there's yeah. no fight here. And one of those things like is Vermithor. I feel like something untoward is going to happen to take a couple of the dragons out. Like, not in battle. Sure. Like, because otherwise, how is it going to continue, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah, do 100%. they burn the whole? I'm, I was gonna say, do they burn the whole cave? But it wouldn't matter because they're like flame proof, aren't they? Something, something, something bad, something bad that I'm not gonna want to see. I know, right? And speaking of, well, let's watch something we do want to see, which is the the trailer for the last the last episode. It makes me so sad that we've only got one episode left. It actually sucks yeah. so hard. It's oh. gonna be such a long yeah. wait as well. 26, it sucks. Anyway, let's they go. brought us the war. And now the blood will flow. You see who that was? Hells are marching. My ships sail at your command. If we are going to face their dragons, we will need the cannibal. Oh, oh. Oh, 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 who was this? The cannibal. The cannibal. They have another dragon. A very scary green flame dragon. This is Aemond here, yes? It has to Yeah, be. it looks like it. They have the cannibal. So basically, they have a dragon that eats other dragons. Although, technically, don't they all do that? Like, Vega's well, been yeah, much they dragon. They to. Well, yeah. No. Well, okay. Keep it going. I'm in to fight. This is cool. Look, all of the dragon seeds around her. Mm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Although she's only got six here. We are missing a dragon. Uh also, do you notice that she's wearing the crown on her head again? Oh yeah. That's nice. That's very cool. It's this wall. Mm. Look at that. Yeah, she's got Viserys's That's crown on. That's weird. very cool. Exactly. So that's the stag. Okay. You must crush this beast at its head. The senseless ball of ascend. Not like this. So they're still building this Alicent Amon thing. <laughs> Who's that? That's Renera's dragon, is it? Is that the veil in the background? Is that the Irie? It's three towers there. It's not a coaster, Harren is it? Hall? The Irie. The Irie. The Irie no. Sorry. Is that Harrenhal? Um... Sure. Huh. Oh dear. We must break the will of our enemy and end this war. Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> oh Jesus. Oh god. Oh, we're gonna lose some dragons and my little heart can't take it. We're gonna lose some dragons, I'm afraid. We're definitely losing some dragons. We're gonna lose some sky puppies. <laughs> <laughs> puppies is there anything more that we need to see have they released another trailer season two finale preview we've got one that's a little bit longer it's all the same much for muchness though okay so it's shown very little other than the fact that dragon fights are coming they're gonna end in a big way yeah big old way. Got a whole, whole week to prepare for it, and I don't think it's enough. I'm going to exercise my right to make the big call here. Just the same way that this is a weird tangent. But when Avengers Infinity War first came out, 
Mm. Everyone was predicting out who dies, who dies, who dies. I'm like, you got to remember one thing. We've never seen Thanos until this point actually throw down. There's only one thing you can do to make me believe that he's an official badass. Kill Hulk. I called that before Infinity War. And technically, that's what he did. I mean, he scared him so much that Hulk wouldn't come out anymore. Yeah. Um, You need to kill the big dragon here. They need to Mm. kill Vermithor. Vermithor's got to go. I know. No. You got to kill the big one. If they've got this big scary dragon, this... um... What did they call it? I was going to say carnival. They didn't call it carnival. What did they call it? Cannibal. Cannibal. Because that looks like a fucking scary dragon. So could they possibly kill Vega? And then he goes and gets this dragon. Bro, Vega is not dying. I can I can guarantee you Vega's not dying. I know, but I'm trying to think of what they're going to get us with. Because it's going to be something that we don't think of. There is going to be something that yeah. we don't think of. There always is. So I'm trying to think outside the box here. Anything is possible. Mm. There's one other trailer here they've released, which I think it might be worth taking a look at. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, let's have a look at this. See if it's. I'm just going to share this now. See if there's any difference mm-hmm. here. And if it's the same thing, well, sorry. Then you get to see the trailer twice. Enjoy, guys. Oh, she looks so bad. Oh, it's different. It's completely it different. different. I saw a bit of this before. So that, that one that we just watched was brand new to me. So the Dragon's Dance, which in George R. 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 Martin's world is the start of war. So the Dragon's are Dancing, which means we're going to war. Hang about. Who is that? Who is that? We got Lannisters. Yeah. Red light with the lion here. That's a wolf. These are Starks. Oh. These are Starks marching across marching across the twins. And dust under their feet. Which dragon is that? Huh. Do you know who I, look, blue dragon. Do you know who I think this is? That's silverwing. Is that Silverwing? I think that's Silverwing because I was really surprised if Silverwing was And blue. then I like dust yeah, under their feet. It's not Silverwing. Is there Silverwing another blue has one? horns. Silverwing has horns. This dragon doesn't oh, have yeah. horns. Could it be? I think stealing? this is. I don't think so. I think this is uh, a tease of uh, the 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 Allison's kid. Oh, the. The soldier, Daron, or whatever. Or yeah, does he have no, a no, 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 not, 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 oh. not Dwayne. That's her brother. Her, the the child mm. who they keep mentioning. He's kind. Um, I think this is him. They mention in 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 this episode just gone that he is his dragon has taken flight, and they need dragons on Aemon's side. Uh, so I reckon this is him okay. marching with his uh, army. We march now toward our annihilation. Yes, <laughs> that was Silverwing. I have entrusted you with a power only few have known. We must strike while we have the advantage. Uh, the Prince Regent is angry. There is no telling what he will do. You wish to rule the Seven Kingdoms, but you reign ruin and death. While you have mustered an army, Rhaenyra has faltered. Pretender has raised new riders again. Look where they are here. This, do you remember in season one? This mm. is the secret staircase that uh, Damon took baby Rhaenyra down when they went to the to the red light district. Yeah. This is the same stairs. Oh. Before yeah, you press play, powerful. rewind it a little bit more. You don't want to miss what he's about to say. Pretender is raising new riders against us. I need you to fly with train fire to battle. Okay, Helena is going to have to ride. We will answer outrage. Uh, outrage. For every one of us who falls, a hundred of them. They- Shit, yeah, look. Look, 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 look. This, I think, is the scene where they've... Get, yeah, this is the scene where they... cap. This is These are the pirates, and this is the scene where they capture uh, capture the kids. Look. 
This is the one ship uh, with black sails. All the others are white sails. This ship is the one holding Rhaenyra's kids, and it's going to get captured. A hundred of them! Why would you make it so obvious? Huh? Why would they make it so obvious that they're well, on that is ship? Is it obvious? Well, is it obvious? This is a stab in the dark I'm having. There will be no mercy! Oh, Christine Cole's in the A hundred of them! There will be no mercy! Right, so Dwayne and Christine Cole are about to go at it. Okay, things are going to get real here. There's Vega. Oh, dear. Oh, it's going to get so messy. Oh. And it's not, oh, it's it's not going to finish with the end of the battle either. It's it's going to continue, I think, with, with the next one. It's not just going to be a battle, end of battle, then next to series. I think they're just going to leave it like three quarters of the way through or something. And it's going to be horrific for a whole year. If that's the season Battle of Harrenhal. Yeah, I think it's 2026 season three uh, start comes. I know. I know. I know. But thank you for joining me again, Lauren. It's been lovely. Thank you for having me again. Was there anything that I touched on that you that, that hasn't been touched on that you wanted to raise with your notes? Um... Don't think so. I think I think I think I think we made some very similar notes. To be fair, I think mm. we covered most of it. Um, I thought it was yeah, what there was one thing we didn't touch on with Laris, kind of batting off the news about mm. Sea Smoke being seen with a rider. I think that's purely because he didn't want Eamon to have that information. Correct. I couldn't see it any other thing that. That played out um, because yeah, obviously it does, it plays into his hands not not having that information. Um, exactly but obviously, right. in, in that second preview that we just watched, then Aemon, uh, not Aemon, um, Aegon is well enough to get up and stand again. So it looks like he's going to be, I'm, I'm guessing, Sunfire at uh, Sunfire. Um, is it Sunfire, his dragon? Um, I'm guessing she Sun healed. Sun so or something like that. Well, like... is she not dead? Apparently not. But I, I thought she was, but apparently not. They're resilient we'll things, these these sky puppies, aren't they? Sky puppies. Um, sky puppies. <laughs> Guys, what did you all think? What are some of your theories? Do you like our theories? Let us know down in the comment section. Thank you, as always, for watching. We'll be here next week for the season finale. Uh, in the meantime, there's another video you can watch right here. Keep it right here on the channel. Lauren and I have got a really interesting two videos coming out over the next sort of 24 to 48 hours. Uh, subscribe if you haven't done so already up here, and we will see you guys on the next video. Thank you, as always, so much for watching. Lauren, thank you to you, and I will see you next thank week. You.